Happy Sunday, and welcome everyone to episode 20 of Video Game Club. As always, I'm Tyler, and I have with me today, the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Pepper's number one customer, Austin. <laughs> Hello, I'm drinking a Diet Dr. Pepper right now. <laughs> I don't usually bring that into the game club. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I just know. And of course... <laughs> It wouldn't be a video game club meeting without the she won't like it necessarily if it's a heavy story game, Mox. Hello. How you doing, Mox? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. And back by popular demand from the deepest, darkest depths of the internet and the recent cause of my suffering, Chris. (laughs) (laughs) Hello. Hey, Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm doing well. My headache is slowly receding, and I'm ready to talk about a game that nobody else likes. Hell yeah. As I mentioned before, this is Video Game Club, where every two weeks we discuss a game voted on by our wonderful friends in the bomb Two Discord, and discuss that game right here on twitch.tv slash bomb TV. If you can't catch us live, no problem. You can also find us on YouTube. Now, before we get started, Mox, you are going mm-hmm. on a trip and can only bring one portable console and one game with you. What are you bringing? Oh, my goodness. Well, it's definitely a 3DS. Mm Mm-hmm. What game, though? Oh, my gosh. Come come back to me. Come back to me. Okay. Austin? Oh, man. I don't get a lot of nostalgia for portable consoles. I like them while they're around, and then once it's a a few years later, it's like... No, I don't. I don't feel any any desire to go back to that. So I guess I would bring a switch. Mm-hmm. And what game? What game would I bring for Switch? That is a really good question. Um, it would probably be maybe Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild. I know that sounds like a really basic answer, but both of those are so dense with how much you can do. Mm-hmm. Like. There's just hundreds of moons to collect in Mario Odyssey. So I feel yeah. like I like those both a lot. And also they would last me a lot per playthrough. Yep. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna say that now. And when Mox comes back around and gives her answer, <laughs> if I have a different answer that I've thought of, I'll let you know. What about you, Chris? Um, I would kind of like often I'm not super nostalgic for handheld consoles. So mm-hmm. I would probably take... <clears throat> A Switch and a copy of Dark Souls Remastered. Ooh. I would take... Dark Souls oh, is ahead. my favorite. Oh, it's your favorite. Just a, Dark Souls is my favorite game of all time. And Ugh. I could play that for the rest of eternity. It'd be fine. Oh, my. I would probably take um, a Switch with Skyrim just because I feel like there's so much to read in that game that I've always wanted to just, like, sit down and read. And Oh, yeah. You get a lot of books in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would probably bring that. Um, even though it's not the best port of that. All right, Mox, we're back to you. We need something. It's, fun- it's funny you said reading because I was thinking, what's like, what game can I think of that has the most text? And I'm pretty sure the 3DS got the release of all of the um, like blob together uh, Ace Attorney games. Mm-hmm. Isn't that right? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would bring. So nice. much reading, so much optional reading, and the stories are so good. Awesome. Now, before moving on, let's just do like a quick... Wait, wait Austin, what was Austin's second answer? Uh, you know, I I forgot about all the RPGs that are on there, and so I was tempted to be like Final Fantasy twelve or mm. one of the those remat. I don't know. I'm going to stick with... Uh, I'm not I'm going to change my answer. There's just too many, too mm-hmm. many good ones. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. It's interesting that Mox chose the 3DS over the Switch, but I, I feel you on that. It's, it's the best system ever made. Whoa, whoa. Now, before moving on, let's do a really quick check in with uh, our side quest game, Dragon Quest XI, which we will talk about in four weeks. Just oh my gosh, crazy. really? I thought it was yes. in two weeks. Is it four? So oh, good. I we're going to we're going to play the next game uh, that that is being voted on in the discord right now. And then the game after that will be Dragon Quest XI. Oh, yep. Phew. Uh, I'll go first. I'm slowly getting the band back together without giving many spoilers, and I've 
I'm, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna stop there. That's where I'm at. I'm slowly getting the band back together. Austin, what about you? I just about have the band back together. Okay. And, and Mox? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm catching up. I'm, uh, like halfway through Octagonia. Okay. I spent okay. a lot of okay. time talking yeah. to people, going back, doing quests. You're... I suspect our experiences will be very different by the end of it. You're getting... <laughs> close-ish to the act the two. Point. Act two, I think. You're getting, yeah. you're like fairly, you gotta go to one more town, I think, right, Austin? Act two of two, I or? I don't remember. I think it's two of three. Hmm. Well, yeah, so th- act, act two is uh, that you're, you're considering that what we're on, Tyler? Correct. Yeah, so at the end of act two is where we're like trying to get everyone to to finish that's like an end of the game and then there's optionally you can continue on and do a, a third act but oh. you don't have to oh my God, we're, like we're not we're not asking default. anyone to do that for this no we are not absolutely not just look at credits that's it right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah just look at them well you know <laughs> get to the credits all right uh and chris i won't ask you because i know you're not participating nope. in the craziness that is Dragon Quest XI. Um, so, the nominations for this episode of Video Game Club were suggested by Chris, and they were Night in the Woods, Guacamelee, and Devil May Cry 5. But before we jump into the Night in the Woods, if you want us to discuss another game from that list, uh, head over to the Bomb Tree Discord to make your voice heard for the next vote. Now, let's jump in. So... Night in the Woods, a single-player adventure game developed by Infinite Fall, published by Finji, released on PC and PS4 on February 21st, 2017, coming later to other consoles, including the Switch. So what was going on in 2017 in North America? It was a pretty big hardware year. We got Nintendo Switch, SNES Classic, New 2DS XL, the Xbox One X. Uh, Speaking of Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey, we got both of those. Star Fox 2, Persona 5, Divinity Original Sin 2, Horizon Zero Dawn, PUBG, and a game that we have played in Video Game Club. Any guesses? Oh, what did we play from 2017? It wasn't Axiom Verge, was it? No, I think that was 2015. It's a single player adventure game, first person. It's like oh, was it uh, Soma? Nope. Plague? A nope. Plague Tale? Nope. Uh, you explore a big house. Oh, uh, What Remains of Edith Finch. Correct. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was just thinking about that game and, and the how scene that awesome. we talked about in the double spoilers part. Oh, yeah. Go play What Remains of Edith Finch and then listen. Yeah. And then Pause. listen to our uh, video game club episode after. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Night in the Woods was developed in Unity. So let's do a quick history on Infinite Fall and Finji. So Infinite Fall is a small studio founded by two people, Alec. Oh man, I'm gonna mess this up. Hal Haloka Haloka H O L O W K A. Haloka. Yeah, and I'm gonna say I'm just gonna say Alec from here on out, and Scott Benson. Uh, Besides Night in the Woods, they worked on two proof-of-concept games um, after the Kickstarter of Night in the Woods. And these were kind of like to give people like little tastes of what Night in the Woods could be like. Um, They were called Lost Constellation and Longest Night. Did anyone play these? No, but I think they were included on the Switch version. They they are. Okay, I I saw them in the menu. I was going to play them after this, but then this game happened. They're also on the uh, Xbox version as well. I don't think they're on the PC version. I don't know for sure. But I think they were released as this like autumn edition thing that they did. The So the PC version, at least the one that I played on Itch, uh, was called the autumn edition. Oh. And it, there was an extras menu. Yep. I did in not there. go to the extras menu. Okay. Yeah. So there it is on PC. Yeah, they're in there. Um, I poked around on Longest Night, I think. Um, but I didn't stay very long. Um, the next project for the devs was announced in January 2020, and they started a co-op um, called the Glory Society, but there's been no other news about their next project besides a small teaser on Twitter. That's kind of been it so far. 
And then, of course, it was published by Finji. Uh, Finji is really interesting. It was founded in 2006, relaunched in 2014. Their developer and publisher. It was founded by Adam Saltzman. And their notable works include Cannabalt, which was an end- endless runner that went pretty viral. Mm. Hundreds. I played that. Uh, you played Cannabalt? Yeah. Cannibal oh, was a really good endless runner. First, like it showed up in, a, I think, the first Humble Android bundle. Oh. And- so I, I played it on an Android, and then eventually it, it went to Steam. Yeah, it was, it was a it's a cool, it's interesting looking game. Um, hundreds and Alphabet and Finji distributed Night in the Woods, and will also be publishing a game that I am very very excited about called Tunic. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Heard if, it. if that ever comes out, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so yeah, so let's dive a bit more into Night in the Woods. So it's a story focused exploration game. Um, players control a young woman named May, uh, who's a cat. <laughs> she's not a woman. She's a she's a zoomorphic human. I was getting there, Mox. <laughs> but I mean, how would you describe her? A cat. You play a cat that has human she's traits. Still a cat. Mm, cat. Cats go meow. I don't think she says meow in the whole uh, the whole game. She does play with a yarn ball. She also she also plays guitar. But she gets insulted. When she <laughs> play with the yarn ball. So. <laughs> Um, they uh, May recently dropped out of college and returned to her hometown to find some unexpected changes. Uh, players can run, jump, you learn some other mechanics, and those mechanics allow you to explore the town uh, where you live called Possum Springs. Um, and we're just going to touch a bit on like, I don't know, just kind of like how the developers describe the game. Uh, Benson described the key actions for the player as explore, converse, see, and touch. While Alec described their approach as narrative focused rather than gameplay first. And I felt that in my bones. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I'd agree with that. <clears throat> um, players make decisions that affect the course of the story. Though Benson said, it's more like, do you hang out with this person? Okay, cool. That person might not know you as well by the end of the game, but the person you hung out with, you're going to get to see their storyline. And so it has like some branching. Uh, story bits that so you won't be able to experience the full story with one playthrough now before jumping into the plot and before we get to our opinions i'm just curious uh go around the table starting with chris who did you spend more time with oh bay one b b or b yes i say bay because i like bay and may (laughs) but she's maybe yeah yeah b i spent all of my time with so you didn't hang out with Greg at all? No, I hate Greg. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, what about you, Mox? I alternated between um, B and Greg, but I like you, you get like one of them's your main one, and B was my main one. I'm I'm the exact same as you, Mox. What about you, Austin? So I I went pure B, um, and I I didn't spend any time with Greg, and I had no regrets on that. Hmm. Oh. Regrets. I, well, I figured like we were already pretty good friends already. Like we knew each other. It was time to like B seemed like she needed a friend. Yeah, and it seemed like the group was kind of using her. I was like, you know what? Let's get to know her a little bit. And also, like Greg will understand. We're already good friends. Yeah, true. Also, I was vibing with B's personality pretty hard. I was like, yeah, I feel all of this. I like. It. <laughs> Um, okay, so let's jump into the plot. Uh, I'm going to put on the old spoiler tag, uh, so just pay attention. We'll turn that off whenever it's time to come back, if you're worried about spoilers. And this is a heavy story game, so if you haven't played it and you're going to play it, I would tune out just for a bit. Okay, we have the spoiler tag on. Um, I'm, I actually, usually for these, I like to look right up the plot or do a lot of research and like and write notes from when I play the game but I found a pretty good plot description on Wikipedia so I'm just going to kind of like read through that and feel free to stop me um, if you want to explore more about the plot um, so May is a 20 year old college dropout who relocates back to her rust belt inspired hometown of Possum Springs which has been struck by the closure of the coal mines and the stagnating economy she meets up with her old friends, including gloomy but intelligent Beatrice Santello, hyperactive delinquent Gregory Lee, and Greg's quiet, modest boyfriend, Angus Delaney. 
May well, I'm just gonna say I love Angus. He was he was super awesome. Angus was Angus cool. is great. Yeah. May also Angus is a bear. Greg is a fox, and B is like a crocodile. Yeah, or alligator. Who knows? <laughs> May also that learns, is very important to the plot. May also to be. learns that another one of her old friends, Casey Hartley, has mysteriously disappeared. I feel like that was so minor to the plot until the very end. That's how but the whole yes. game is, but we'll get into that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> May, May spends several days exploring Possum Springs and spending time with her friends, but she also begins to have strange and vivid dreams. At the town's Halloween festival, May witnesses a teenager... Harfest? The, the name's so punny, you have to say it. You can say it. Harfest! <laughs> May witnesses a teenager being kidnapped by a mysterious figure. The four friends begin working together to figure out what is going on, with May's mental health slowly deteriorating with every one of her dreams. After intensive searching, the four stumble across a strange group of cloaked figures in the woods who chase after them. May ends up falling and lapses into a coma. Now, they did miss one thing, which was the arm. You guys remember the arm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was like uh, first, <clears throat> first or second day back in town, you guys find an a severed arm on the side of the road. You poke it for like five minutes before they <laughs> finally yeah. take you out of that scene. I made we that got. thing do so there's, many loops. <laughs> there's, there, you reveal something. Did you find it? He has a tattoo, or rather, it. The arm has a tattoo on it. That's how you. That's how you end the scene. I never. I. I, I never noticed the tattoo. tattoo. Oh, you poke the sleeve up a little bit, and then it ends. Oh, I, could I tried to poke the sleeve, the sleeve and up. it kept just like it would go back yeah. down. And was, Same. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I spent more time trying to poke that stupid cockroach, which apparently you get an achievement for. I could. Oh. Uh, May eventually wakes up and returns to her friends, and she reveals that the reason she dropped out was due to her increasing dissociation from people and the world. It is implied that May suffers from some sort of depersonalization disorder, seeing everything as merely shapes. May's journal, in which she draws pictures for each major event in the game, was given to her by a doctor to write down her emotions after she bludgeoned a student with a softball bat six years ago as a result of a dissociative episode. That sounds terrible. Yeah. Um, due to this incident, the townsfolk become wary of May and cause a financial and caused a financial and emotional strain in her family. After her dissociation worsened at college, May mustered up the strength to leave and return home, hoping that being back in Possum Springs would help her return to normal. I didn't really notice yeah, that- in the journal. Like I thought she was just mm-hmm. bad at writing. Or drawing. What? Like, that, that, like, they say here that the journal kind of shows that, you know, there's like, she may draw like shapes and stuff in there. Yeah. Oh, I think what they were trying to say with that paragraph was like, that journal is something that was enforced on her by her doctor. Like, uh, yeah. basically, after that, that whole event happened, her doctor, who is also like just a general physician and a dentist and like does a bunch of other. Stuff, different yeah. practices for the town not qualified to to really be handling mental health just to science her a journal <laughs> like apparently that's his big big catch-all for mental health have a journal uh oh so, oh yeah the uh because the, the, the other poem guy summers summers yeah, yeah. she's a lady is i she? was is she yes oh. her middle name's ann so, uh yeah do you just assume her, her gender mocks based on a middle name? Ooh, Come on. No, they use pronouns if you see her poetry slam at the oh. library. Oh, oh, you're right. I skipped, yeah. her, I yeah. skipped the yeah. poetry slam. Aww. I was like, they were like, do you want to stay for this? I said, absolutely oh. not. Dude, <laughs> what? the poem was so awesome at the poetry slam. The, the poetry slam was pretty great. I, I made sure I to talk to her to every single day. I any longer. <laughs> oh, I liked Selmer's. Anyway, S- Selmer's the journal is a grounding mechanism because she suffers from deep like depersonalization you realize yeah. yeah and that's why the journals like the art styles kind of scattered a little bit is because mm. mm. that could just be you know how may sees the world or how she processes things still wounded <laughs> <laughs> why does she get wounded you have to uh, you missed that well this is when she sort of lapsed into the coma that, that's where yes. we're leading off from right yeah yeah um still wounded may decides to venture out into the woods alone to find the group who chased her and the others only for Greg, B, and Angus to refuse to let her go by herself. The group enter the old mines and meet the mysterious group who are revealed to be a cult. Dun, dun, the, dun. the cult <laughs> turns out to be behind the kidnappings of several residents, including Casey, taking those whom they, they deem useless to society and whom 
they say will not be missed into the mines to sacrifice them to a godlike entity called the Black Goat in hopes that the Black Goat will revitalize the economy of Possum Springs. Uh, uh, the cult's that's, leader... That's code for Satan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Satan. Satan's bad. Uh, <laughs> Satan's bad, <and> great. <laughs> the, the cult's leader allows the group to leave, threatening them never to tell anyone about the cult. However, while riding up the mine's elevator, a member of the group attacks May. The others manage to save her, and the elevator falls, collapsing the mine and presumably trapping the entire cult underground. That part was weird, and it also happens at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Like at the yep. very end. Mm-hmm. I'm so upset about it. Mm-hmm. Um, depending Wait, why on, are you upset about that? Because it was extremely interesting. And right when things were getting interesting, the game ended. For me, at least. <laughs> uh, but that's... I'll talk about that more later. Uh, depending on who the player interacted with the most throughout the course of the game, May will sit down with either B or Greg and talk about the events of the previous night and all the things that have happened in Possum Springs. The others join them shortly after, and May tells them that although they will all be forced to grow and adapt to life, as it goes on for better and for worse, they can still enjoy their time together now. The game ends as the four decide to forget about their problems for the time being and have band practice. Uh. Ugh. And that is the game. Now before jumping into other stuff that's not spoilery, that's non-spoilery, what is there any spoils that you would like to spoil? Um, I liked all of the like weird things and like people you could talk to aside from talking to B and um Greg. Greg, which of course would like quote unquote end the day. So you could go and talk to Germ or Lori or What the hell was the point of Germ? He just was weird. He's a weirdo. Yeah, he just was like he was around, and then all of a sudden he's just like there at the end, like, well, yeah, I guess yeah. I'll go get a rope. Uh. <laughs> I talk, oh my god, that was. I talked to my mom every day at church. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I talked to my mom. Uh, and I dad couldn't find. Did you church. go to the field? Oh, the church is yeah. up the stairs, like right when you first get into town. Yeah, you it's closed get... off the first day. It yeah, is. It... Oh, I just stopped going up there after. That. I, I oh, also, geez. yeah, the, I did go to the field. And that was really that that was really cool. That was a cool experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked talking to Lori, who is on like one of the rooftops. Did you talk to her? I did. I don't. Is that the, who's the person with the telescope? I did all of those. Oh, that's like Mister. Oh, I forgot his name. Mister. Something starts with a B, I think. Yeah, that, I did like that the telescope bit. Telescope yeah. bit was cool. I didn't talk to Lori. I don't think. Oh, uh, she was just interesting. Did you guys exhaust the? like communication of the person in the like in the subway that knows about your grandpa no yeah. I quit going uh, I stopped going to the subway after I realized that it was making me pass up a bunch of stuff in the city mm. you have to go down there if you want to feed the rats because you have to yeah, steal I, I went down pretzels. there one more time to get a pretzel to feed the rats oh, and that was the you can only feed the rats three down. times and they multiply oh I only whoa rats. no now I feel bad oh yeah, you let you let them die well, you know. Also, you can go on a garbage exploration journey. Did you do that? Mm-mm. Yes, I did play this game. I like <laughs> that part too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, really my point good. is, I liked doing all that more than I liked playing the actual game. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was hating the game so much that I I reached a point where I stopped exploring and was just like, please take me to band practice so I can end the day. Oh. <laughs> so. Um, Go ahead. Uh, I was I was like that for the first probably two to three hours of this game. I was like, why did I why did I buy this game when I bought it? Mm. Why did I put this on the list? But like <laughs> about halfway through, I started coming around on it. Save it. Put a pin. Put a pin in it. Okay. Okay. Is there any sp- uh, any spoils? I I so I know you did not like the ending, Tyler. I actually, that was like one of the only parts of the game that I did like. I thought that it was a really interesting scene, especially when you go down uh, into the mine mm-hmm. and you're in that, it's like when it's completely dark and they're just I, like, I know you're in here. Yeah. And they're like, oh, how about this? Take a couple steps forward if you want to die. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and the reveal that it's just like, what the hell? Um, I liked the ending. So- I didn't like that once it was there, like that was it. 
Like, the game's over. Right. I wish that had been, like, a little bit uh, explored a little bit more earlier on, because it was a major tone shift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of out of nowhere. Like, they hinted at it a little bit throughout earlier in the game, but also it was just, like, most of the time that wasn't really prevalent. Also, Casey, when they brought him up there, they're like, you killed, you killed Casey, oh my god! It was, and I, I straight up, I went, who's Casey? Because <laughs> I didn't remember that Casey had gone missing. Yeah. So when you mentioned that earlier, I was just like, oh, I guess they did mention it earlier on in the game, but... Um, yeah. And his missing poster is on the, the news board where the yarn ball is. Yeah, that's true. I went to that... I went there once, and... Then I, I I went there one more time. I was like, "There's nothing new here. Uh, I'm not gonna check this out anymore." Um, when I when I get, go out of my way to explore stuff, and they go, "Maybe try again later." I got burned by Assassin's Creed, where it was like, "Okay, if I, I kept exploring this space over and over again, thinking at some point they're gonna add something, and they wouldn't." And I was just like, "So I, ever since then, if you don't, if I, if I check somewhere a couple of times and they don't." Mm. They don't put anything there for me to to find. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, all right, I'm not I'm not dealing with it anymore. <laughs> all right, we're gonna move on from spoilers. Okay, we're doing it, and it seems like there's gonna be a lot of opinions, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's talk about the development. So, Night in the Woods was announced on October 22nd, 2013, on Kickstarter, and it set a five uh, five fifty thousand dollar funding goal which was reached in only 26 hours. The project eventually earned over 200,000 in crowdfunding. Pretty successful Kickstarter. The additional funding allowed for Infinite Fall to hire an an animator to create additional animations. And it also allowed for Adam Saltzman, the founder of the publishing company, to create a roguelike that is playable within Night in the Woods. Oh yeah, I forgot about Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. It does exist. It does exist. Infinite Fall did limit the amount of stretch goals to avoid scope creep. Um, they also made those two companion games, uh, one in December 2013 called Longest Night, and then another one in 2014 called The Lost Constellation. Um, and Benson names Chris Ware, Mike Mignola, Mary Blair, Flannery O'Connor, and Richard Scarry as influences on his work on Night in the Woods. Richard Scarry. I know. No, I played one of those games. Let's do that. Let's <laughs> do <of> this game. <laughs> Developer Alec created the soundtrack for Night in the Woods. Three albums of the game's music were released via Bandcamp on March 9th, 2017. And I assume there's probably some vinyl that exists for Night in the Woods. There is. Um, Alec named Dive, D-I-I-V, pronounced Dive, as a large influence on the game's score. And Dive is like a psychedelic band, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Release and Reception. So the game received eights and nines. Not from me, but it received eights and nines. (laughs) Uh, it made Eurogamer and Polygon's top 50 games of 2017, uh, Eurogamer 13, Polygon 23rd. It was nominated for several awards, won multiple awards in narrative. And to summarize uh, the critics, um, the, the pros were the writing, characters, 2D visuals, story, and music, and the cons were the pacing and the tone of mm. the game. I agree. I also agree. Um future development so we're still waiting on an ios release Uh, they announced it a while ago hasn't been released on ios yet and there was a physical release planned with a limited run but that has been delayed indefinitely let's hop into our personal takes and mox let's start with you okay I didn't. I, I think I didn't mind this game as much as you guys did. Um, I the pacing was so bad though, and it like caused me to just like really get frustrated because it's like a really slow burn when you like. I feel like the library is when you first start to like get at the story, and then from there it just like goes up in flames and then turns to ash in like an hour. I know it was probably like three hours, but it was just if you if you just squish all the story together, it was like just an hour. Um, other than that, I liked all of the little like side thingies you could do. I really liked the art, although I played on a switch and it, it chugged and it took forever to load. So it was really sucks because there's a lot of loading spots. Oh my God. Anytime you interact with anything, it's a load. It took forever. And I was, I watched a video because I wanted to rewatch a scene of someone who played it on a PC and the, the loading scene was like 
five seconds. I was like, oh my God, you know, you wait like 30 <laughs> seconds on the switch for that. And during all Jeez. of the dream sequences, it was choppy, hmm. like, like, I don't know, under like 30 fr frames. Really? Like frames? Yeah. Hmm. It was so bad. And like, it was hard because it's platforming. And, yeah. you know, sometimes you have to do the little triple jump thing and mm -hmm. where you land matters. And it was extremely difficult. And it was frustrating. When did you have to use the triple jump? Because I was actually going to bring up, I, I, I thought the triple jump, like they teach you that at the start. And then I never, ever needed to use it again. Uh oh, I, I can think of like there maybe was one. two or three specific circumstances where you might need it. I I used it in one of the dream sequences. I used it fairly mm. often, just because if would, you could try, like, I, I was using spots, it by could... accident, but it like it, it, I I never felt like I needed it to reach a spot, mm. but. It made it more Maybe convenient to reach certain spots. Sure, yeah. sure. And yeah, if you want to get to the sleeping cat on the top of the top, top, top of the roofs, which you interact with, but she does put in her journal, you have to do the triple jump. Yeah. Okay. What do you, <laughs> and when you say sleeping cat, Mox, you mean uh, another like? I so like just I, like her. She's a cat. She's a cat. I, sleeping. Every time, every time you walk by a cat in the game, May stares at the cat, but she doesn't stare at any other animals. Just cats. She is a cat. It's a real, Why would she uh, stare at the cats? It's a goofy Pluto situation here. We don't know. We don't know the rules. Just somehow. <laughs> somehow Why does Goofy get dog, voice lines? Pluto's Why does Pluto's also a dog? <laughs> May's a cat, but also there's just an actual cat. You know, it's hard to say. I yeah. mean, she acknowledges she's a cat because when there's that yarn ball on the newsstand, she's like, "Is this some kind of sick joke?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. I didn't mind the game, but the pacing was so bad, so bad. It was painful. I wish that they could, like, I don't know, better space out the actual plot line amongst the act, the rest of the game, and also improve, uh, you know, frame rate on the Switch. Other than that, it was fine. I really liked the music. I did not like the mini games, any of them really, Ooh. either stealing or playing your base or doing that stupid roguelike. They were all dumb, and I what? didn't do them if I didn't have to. What about the scenes with uh, Greg and B? Was there anyone that like, without spoiling too much, was there anyone that really stuck out with you? Because in in a way, I, sometimes those are like little mini games, depending on what happens. Yeah, I did. There was one with B where you're at the mall. That mm -hmm. was pretty fun. I liked that Dude, one. Dude, when you walked into the store, could you just smell it? Yeah. <laughs> like as soon as I walked in there, just immediately my brain was just like this is exactly what it smells like to be here right now <laughs> <laughs> well and that brings me to my last point which is this game is made for people who love nostalgia and who love sarcasm and i do not like really either of those things so the humor of the game didn't get to me but it was not bad so i give it like a like a six a six out of ten on the mock scale <laughs> okay let's go to you chris so, like I was kind of starting to started to say earlier, was, I was not in love with this game at the start. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think the pacing is horrible. Wait, wait, can first. you tell us why you picked it on your list? I had picked it because I picked up this game on a Steam sale like two years ago and never touched it. Mm. So I was like, eh, you know, it, it was kind of the same with um, when I picked Fury. It was like, hey, this is something to get it crossed off my list that I've been meaning mm. to play for a while. So I had... For the first two and a half-ish hours or so, I did not like this game. I regret picking it. Um, but once you got to the the Harvest Festival, the Harfest. Thank you. Um, I think it started to pick up once you start going into the... Uh, you're investigating a mystery very specifically, looking for clues like going to the library, and the historical society. I think... It, it starts to pick up its pacing a little bit more. Yeah. And then, unfortunately, you're about an hour from the end by that point. But <sighs> um, I think if they if if they could have spaced, like if they could have bumped up the reveal of what's going on by like an hour and then had a little bit more after that, I think it would have been way better balanced. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I re something about this game just grew on me. Like the more <laughs> I played it, the more I was like, it's, it's just kind of charming. Like, it's, I never found the writing to be all that funny. It all felt a little too young for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> like, it was skewed towards a much younger generation. 
Yeah. But it was still like the themes that they're talking about, like having pretty serious discussions on like mental illness and growing up into being an adult and responsibilities and stuff like that that were that were pretty interesting and I was enjoying reading some of those especially like some of the conversations you have with your mom at home and yeah some of the stuff that the conversations you have with B over the course of your nights spent mm. with her is really great the whole uh, the dinner scene was fantastic Ugh. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. was so so uncomfortably realistic. <laughs> <laughs> um do, do you think you'll play this game again? I might, honestly. Fuck. Like I Like I said, it, it, I never would have thought that would be the case from where I started, mm -hmm. but having played through it now, I kind of want to go back and just take my time with it, explore a little bit more, try to get some, try to fill up my journal. Yeah. Fill out some of the side quests and stuff that I can do, see what else is out there. Try to figure out what's up with those weird emo teenagers in the woods. <laughs> yeah, because if, if you never did any of like Greg's stuff, then there's definitely like some mini games that you missed. Um Yeah, and yeah, I didn't touch mm -hmm. Greg at all because I found him incredibly annoying and I hated oh, him. He puts cuffs <laughs> on his ears. Yeah, I hate so I hate Greg. <laughs> I mostly I, I came to the point where I felt like I was I was trying to be May's parent because I was mm -hmm. like, Greg is a bad influence on what May needs right now. <sighs> May needs an adult structure in her life, mm. so May's going to go hang out with B. Greg explains it, though. No, I, I, and I'm sure. But, but, yeah, but I'm sure Greg has his excuses and reasons for he, why he is the way he is. But, but every time he comes to you, he's like, let's do a crime. Yeah. But he says yeah. why. <laughs> I know, let's but do so. something law random, huh? -huh. Yeah. He pretty much says those words if you like text him every oh, day. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah overall i was i was night in the woods won me over it took a little while and it didn't finish as strong as i wanted it to but it definitely won me over what what would you rank it on the on the chris scale i'd probably give it uh, i'd probably give it around a seven maybe a 7.5 wow. okay wow if you if you do play it again i would be interested to know your opinions on like another video game club episode just like a random like and remember night in the woods chris played yeah. it again and here's what he thought because yeah. i'm i wonder if it'll grow even more once experiencing like greg's side of the story or once you like know more um if it'll well, like change how you look at it yeah and i i definitely want to play through it again just because I, I love the i was getting a lot of really strong like twin peaks vibes from mm -hmm. the town where it was like it's just kind of a weird, quirky town, and there's maybe mm. something dark going on underneath the surface. Maybe not, but there could be, and everyone's just kind of real weird. And I don't and, know. I liked it. So, yeah, I think and, and given without, the time, I would love to explore more of that. Without saying too much, revealing too much personal information, Chris, I feel like where we're from, we can probably relate to the whole, like, yes, washed up was, town. That yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, because, yeah, I had forgot to mention that. Yeah, they nailed... The feeling of li growing up in a small, crappy town where there's nothing going on and there's no future for anyone there, mm -hmm. and then leaving and then subsequently coming back to that town. Yep. I and how every agree. some things have changed, some things are the same, you know. They say that May's neighborhood got better, and you even see like the town council like walking around. Oh my and like, gosh! Don't he, I the, loved them. The town council <laughs> reminds me of the same type of people in small towns that go around just like trying to find problems yep. and no mm. one agrees on anything and They're just trying to justify their jobs yes that's that's the feeling that i got from yep. that and that's funny. i don't know I'll, I'll go next unless austin you're you're super go for um it. so similar to 999 <laughs> i need to start by saying that i am not a big fan of heavy story driven games like i i have literally never been a huge fan of them i don't know why but I cannot get into them. So this game was kind of a huge miss for me. Uh, the story itself wasn't that interesting to me. Although hearing Chris talk about it, it kind of makes me like want to go back a little bit to like really invest in another side of the story and explore to see if maybe it'll grow a little bit. Um, and I know that there's more to this story than just college dropout coming home, but it just didn't really appeal to me. The mini games were not very good in my opinion. Um, the songs were just kind of like, meh. I wasn't that into them. 
Um, did you do well, or did so? Did you like play the game? I'm sorry, play the mini game with mm-hmm. the song because i was sad because you if you're, you either do really well in the mini game or you miss the scene you don't get to read the lyrics you don't see everybody's little faces i did really well on <laughs> every song except the last one i think i got perfect notes on every wow. one except the last one because i thought something would happen but it doesn't you get just... an achievement if you get perfect on all of them i think not if you're playing on itch <laughs> <laughs> uh the story did go somewhere but by the time it got there i was kind of done with the game like uh, Mox, you mentioned, and Chris, like it would have been great if that would have happened kind of more towards the middle or middle end, and then yeah. I could have found out more or like maybe explored more of the, at the historical society or to understand more background on uh, the end without spoiling it. What happens? Um, I like that the game has replayability though, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm not like super excited to play it again. But if Chris does and comes back and says, "Yeah, give it another chance," I could see myself maybe trying it out again at least maybe do some achievement hunting at the same time um how was the frame rate on you played it on console right yeah i played it on the new xbox and it was great loading issues were good everything was pretty good i feel like since it was praised so well that i'm missing something or maybe i'm just not the target audience but either way it's just like a four out of ten for me like just like it's not a hit it's not something for me and i'm it's probably just who i am so I can say if you tend to like games that we've played that I like, um, <laughs> I would avoid this one. <laughs> but uh. maybe give it a try. You know, it um, it is on Game Pass, so oh. I didn't have to pay for it. Well, you know, I pay for the subscription, but I didn't have to like pay for the game separately to play it. Right, and if you if you, I know a lot of people in the Bomb Chew Discord uh, got the HIO Racial Injustice Bundle last mm-hmm. year. It was in there. That's, I think that's the only bundle it's ever been in it so far. Talk about so that's that's how I acquired it. Oh. I'm glad I didn't pay twenty bucks to buy it on Steam. Oh my God. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's me, uh, Austin. What about you? Uh, I liked the title screen. Oh my God! <laughs> oh Wait, my really? Lord! Come on! Before yeah, oh, like when you load on on the Switch, you know how there's like a, a static screen and then it goes to the title screen. Mm-hmm. The static screen is just May's face, really zoomed in and pixelated. And I hated oh. that, so it's so funny that you say that. <laughs> anyway, keep going. So, I, 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 yeah, <laughs> not not that, but, like, when it loads in, it's got the tentacles all on the side, and, like, you're at the menu. But, um, yeah, I liked that, and then most of the rest of the game <laughs> I was not into. Oh. What about the minigames? I did not. I, I, I So, Tyler and I have talked about this before. I don't remember if we've talked about it on Game, or on game Club, but we love the idea of games inside of games. Yep. Like, mm-hmm. Um, in the tourist, the arcade, oh my like gosh. a lot of those are just like little, like it's not, it's not really anything that progresses you a lot of the time in, in when you have a game inside a game, but it's just kind of some cool little distraction. It's like, like there's the, something really fascinating the about arcade taking Stardew. a break from the game you're playing to play a different game. What'd you say, Chris? Uh, I said the first one that comes to mind is the arcade in a uh, Stardew Valley. Oh yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah. Mahjong. Um, Yakuza. <laughs> yeah, y- Yakuza has so much, so so many games inside games. Um, so we love the idea of that. And in here, the games <laughs> that were inside this game were like, I-, I get, I get it. It's not the main game, so they're simple, but they lasted for way too long for how simple they were. the The Guitar Hero style game was very do- like. Those songs went on for minutes. That should have been a 30 second thing. (laughs) You know what I mean? The roguelike, that should have been one or two levels. I got through level three and it was just like, this is just going to keep going. Why am I playing this? Um, And like, it was, it was interesting that it was there, but it was just so basic to blast for that long. So, um, uh, th- not not did, a good example of games inside games. Did you finish? I, 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 did you finish the um, the game that was on the PC on the laptop? The nope. I left it alone Damn. after I so. got to uh, the third floor. I said, "There's no reason for me to be playing this, and this is not that fun." I played quite a bit of it, but it did not change. Like the more, like yeah. it was you this- lose hearts. I know it's and that, but so. like, but like that's it. Like there's the game, yeah. like. It was the same exact loop. Find the special room to get the key, bring key to the door, and then, oh, there's more people yeah. and you have less life. And it was it just kept doing yeah. that. And I know that like this isn't some game that's trying to, you know, 
push boundaries or whatever, but I, uh, I was yeah not happy. Yeah, um, I didn't like the main character at all. <laughs> I couldn't identify with her in any way. Um, sh- her life was just kind of a mess, and she wasn't really looking to do anything about it. It was just kind of, to me, a garbage person. Um, <laughs> I think she described herself uh, that way. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but the, she kind of like look at Austin enjoys being a garbage person. <laughs> you know Austin what I mean? Over your humble bragging. We get it, Austin. You have your life no. together. Okay. I like. I, I, look, I get it. Like stuff happens. I get that she dropped out of college and she had like she had some decent reasons for that. But also, like you know, yeah. at some point, you, you got to start trying for yourself. Right. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I mean? She's it, all uh, great. Anyways. You got to do something um, rather than being content with doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, w- I identified a lot better with her parents, which kind of told me a lot of, about how I was not the uh, mm-hmm. the target demographic for this mm-hmm. game. Her mom was so nice. So nice. Yeah, yeah. she was. Um, B had an interesting story. I didn't really like her initially, but she grew on me and um, she... She she her story went to interesting places. I was glad that I spent time with her. When did you start liking um, her? I'd be interested to know. Um, for me, it was the college. I think it was town after the uh, scene. Okay, for me. Okay, I think for me it was when we went to go fix the the furnace in the basement. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was cool. That was cool. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Um. Let's see. I liked the ending. Uh, I liked the the climax of the end. Mm-hmm. Um, that was that was suddenly like interesting. I didn't really enjoy the epilogue that came after. It was just kind of like, oh my gosh, can we can we please get get this over with? <laughs> I think what would have been more interesting would be um, like especially if you're going around talking to everyone every day or like really paying attention to details. It would have been cool to see some people kind of missing in the epilogue to without kind of go, getting into the implications of that. But I, I'm sure you guys can understand why that would be kind of an interesting thing to see. Yeah. 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 I, I overall really did not enjoy playing it or most of the story uh, or the dialogue. The, the At most, if I thought something was funny, it, it never, never even resulted in a small exhale of breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, the dream sequences were tedious for me. Um, towards, yeah, I thought same. Towards they the started end. To Any, get anytime, tedious. yeah, anytime May tried to analyze something, it was just like, oh, please stop talking. Um, <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I would, I would give this a five out of ten because the game functions like it's not glitchy. Ugh. Or I take away points for that uh, reason. Don't play it on the Switch. Yeah, on PC it worked very well functionally uh, and visually, like it, it, it was pretty smooth. Um, so it functioned as a game. It was just not very fun for me to play, uh, and I will never play this again unless I join a different game club, and then I'll <laughs> beg them not to play this game if they try to pick it. But <laughs> that would be probably the only scenario where I would play this again. Wait, I want to ask everybody a question because I feel like this game is an emotional game and I would describe myself as an emotional person. So I liked, I like vibe with some of that. I wonder if you guys, what is your response? I'm super emotional. (laughs) Yeah, I'm down for emotional stuff, but I need to be able to connect with something Mm -hmm. in in that, in that story. Like, and I couldn't connect with anything here. Um, I, I, I've lived in a big city all of my life. So like, I've never had the small town experience um my the main character again i just could not i couldn't i couldn't vibe with her Mm. at all (laughs) all right so yeah anyone has have any closing remarks you want to say about it i'm sorry i put this on everyone (laughs) (laughs) i enjoyed myself at least well so like it's got overwhelmingly positive reviews on steam i thought I would find something to like about it, but I think I think really I'm just not like Tyler said. I'm just not the target demographic I, for I it. I think a lot of the game. I think either we're too oh. old or it's just uh, yeah. Wh- where where our lives have gone, I don't know. I, I, it, yeah, it, a lot of it's a lot of your enjoyment of the game seems to come out of how much are you going to be able to 
connect on a personal level with either a character or the characters in general or the setting yeah or just some of the themes because like yeah i didn't connect with may as a character but like i said b i was 100 percent on board with uh both of may's parents i loved the small town setting was perfect for me Mm -hmm. you know the some of the dealings with uh different mental issues and disorders you know i can i can identify with some of that like Mm -hmm. so there there was enough little pieces that once the game finally caught it caught up to like the pace it should be going at i was finally able to enjoy it so yeah you definitely have to be able to identify with something in there yeah i i feel like ironically the like if you identify with may it's because you identify with the fact that she just doesn't really know who she is so yeah i feel like that's what is required to enjoy this game on a more deep, on a deeper level, not knowing who you are. Yeah. Yeah. And a, and a lot of that would come naturally just from being in that age group. Like if, if we were in right. our twenties right now playing this game, like yeah. in our early twenties, it would be different. It would maybe be different. I think you're right. I, I'm sure. I, I'm sure I was a lot more like May when I was 20 years old, but <laughs> I'm not 20 years old anymore. So yeah, I don't have the patience for some of that stuff, but. Yeah, same. I, I know a person who highly recommended this game to me, or just in general. And uh, yeah, if she, she did, all all of this is fitting her her personality pretty <laughs> strongly. <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, that was a uh, night in the woods. Um, and our next game is going to be Katamari Damashi Reroll. Yeah. So, so thank you all Woo-hoo. for voting, uh, and thank you everyone for joining as well. Again, just as a reminder, you can catch us here on twitch.tv slash TV every two weeks at 2 Eastern, with the next stream being on April 11th. Or, if you can't make the live session, you can find the episode up on YouTube shortly after. Now, before we leave, Austin, Chris, any uh, anything people should watch out for on BombChu? There's a bundle coming up, right? Yeah, bundle not this week, next, week. but next week, and um, that will be happening. It'll be it will be interesting to see uh, how they reveal it if they do the same thing they did last time, or if that was just hype for control, which is why they did it to push sales. Right? Yeah. So we we might get a reveal this this Tuesday, and if we don't, then I guess we'll know what's up. Yeah. That's true. Mox, anything you want to plug? No. No, all not right. at all. <laughs> all right. Sorry. <laughs> um, you don't have a Glade plugin or anything? To, I have, to <laughs> I have t- something totally unrelated that I just want to say. We have two birthdays in the Bomchu family today. Um, I would like to say happy birthday to Lena, and I, I would, I also want to make sure I say happy birthday to the piggies. They're one year Are they old just today. One, one collateral birthday. They well, three of them were all born on the same day, so. Um, and two of them we don't know, so we just kind of loop them together. But yeah, Piggy's birthday, they're going to get some watermelon. Hopefully Lena gets some cake. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, is she? I'm going to be making her some... Uh, uh, I, I don't want to spoil what's in it. Okay. Uh, Lena loves waffles, and Aww. so like I'll make her waffles out of different things, Ooh. kind of for different special events. So I've got a new... A new type of waffle I'm going to make her today, which she doesn't get to know because she's watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Austin, thank That's you sweet. so much for joining. Thanks for having me. Mox, thank you as well. Thank you. And Chris, thank you for joining and thank you for nominating these games. It's a pleasure as always. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tyler. This was Video Game Club, episode 20, A Night in the Woods, and we will see you next time. I'd like to give a special shout out to Michael Slater, Blake Harms, and all of our patrons over on Patreon. Thank you, and thank everyone for watching.